We are seeing a relatively strong consumer. In fact, like you guys mentioned, you know, Darden uh, at Olive Garden is, is even pulling back on value a little bit because, you know, they, they don't feel like they have to be as promotional in terms of the price point, yeah. uh, you know, to get that customer, customer to come into the door. So we're certainly seeing a healthier consumer. Uh, we're seeing a lot of restaurants benefit from such trends as, uh, you know, technology investments that have now resulted in things like, you know, off-premise growth through the third-party delivery, uh, through apps, through loyalty, et cetera. You know, Chipotle is probably one of the uh, primary beneficiaries of, of some of those investments. We're certainly sure. seeing digital uh, sales growth there uh, that are exceeding expectations. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we do have a pretty healthy Consumer and, and restaurants are doing the right thing, things to uh, you know, benefit from uh, current trends. And Kate, here's a direct quote from the CEO of Darden. The consumer is really strong at this point. So it's fascinating. You go back to what happened for the, la the, the Great Recession going into it. You had the housing market starting to crack. You had signs in the stores that kind of wacky things were happening. Consumers weren't shopping like they once were. Restaurants obviously were one of the first things to suffer. But again, we're not kind of hearing that even in the forward looking commentary. Yeah, and we were at ICR in January during the government shutdown and we had so many concerns about what this might mean for the consumer. We heard from the Chipotle CEO, the Domino CEO and the Wingstop CEO. All of them said that they felt very confident about, you know, trends moving forward. I will say one thing that is of concern within the industry at large and that's labor. You hear a lot more concerns about rising food costs, r rising labor costs yeah. and what that does for their bottom line, much more so than consumer confidence right now. Now things can change and they'll be among the first companies to, to see it, right. you know, feel it and tell us about it. But right now everybody seems fairly confident. And that's a high class problem to have in a way. If you say labor costs are going up, well, those, you know, labor is also a beneficiary of that versus if it's like, hey, you know, we've never been, we're getting people for cheap, but that, you know, and number, beyond, that's not a good sign. Beyond just costs, it's finding people yes. too, right? Because yes. the economy is so strong, the job market is so tight, and there's notoriously high turnover within the industry. So it's finding those good people, keeping them on board is another big challenge. Yeah, and Nick, I see here Wingstop is your top pick. Um, where, where would you be, where would you tell investors to be if they think a slowdown is coming in the U.S.? <sighs> Well, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to be in a restaurant if a slowdown does impact, you know, the consumer. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, if we're worried about global, uh, a global slowdown, uh, certainly, you know, most uh, of, the, of the restaurant revenues are, are domestic. There's also a secondary benefit in terms of lower interest rates. You know, names like the, the, the primarily franchise names like a Wingstop, uh, you know, like a Dine Brands, for example, uh, sure. that have, you know, five, six times debt to EBITDA. Uh, levels and trade uh, as 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 bond, uh, bond proxies, you know, they they tend to see their valuations uh, go up a little as well. So, yeah. uh, you know, we, we prefer to primarily franchise names. Also, they don't have the labor cost issues as well, um, since you know they're just taking the royalties from the top line.